by the end of this lecture, you're going to know how to configure a test suite so we can mock the HTTP service and send back fake responses. Now, to demonstrate how to test HTTP requests, we will add a test for our iTunes search service, which we created in the section on HTTP. Now, we're going to use the Promise version of the search service that uses JSONP to get around the issue of cores. So this is the search service that we are going to be testing, again, using JSONP. The results of the API request are getting stored on a results array, and we're parsing everything into instances of search items. Just a quick note, although we are using JSONP here, HTTP and JSONP are exactly the same, from the purposes of testing at least. If you wanted to just test HTTP, just replace all of the instances of JSONP with HTTP. Now let's look at our test suite here. So you can see I just have a basic test bed where I've configured it. I've added the provider of the search service and I've just fleshed out just a really basic stub test spec at the bottom with some, well, I, I eventually want this to be some response that gets sent back from the HTTP request. So even though I've provided search service and I've imported JSON P module, if we actually try to run our test, the search service is using a real JSON P module. So it's really, really going to try and send a HTTP request. We don't want that to happen. In our isolated unit tests, we never actually ever want to send a real HTTP request to some other service. That will make our test not isolated. That will make our test dependent on some other API. It will probably run a lot slower and will again have all of the issues that we had previously where we're depending on something that we don't control. It will make our test brittle and hard to maintain. So to solve this, to, to configure our search service for testing, we want the JSONP and HTTP services to use something called a mock backend instead of a real backend. Now these backends are the underlying pieces of code that actually send and handle HTTP requests and responses. And by using a mock backend, we can intercept the real requests and simulate responses with test data. So the configuration for this is slightly more complex since we are using something called a factory provider, which we covered in the section on dependency injection. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to initially provide something called a mock backend and also something called a base request options. So the base request options are from the Angular HTTP module and the mock backend is from the Angular HTTP testing module, okay? So we first need to make sure we provide those. And then the next thing we need to do is we need to override the default provider for JSONP to use our mock backend instead of the real backend. So we're gonna add a provider. The token is going to be JSONP, so we don't wanna, we're going to, we want to try and override the default configuration for JSONP, so we just provide the same token. We're going to use a factory function in order to create the instance. That factory function is going to take two parameters, a backend and an options. And all that this will do is just create a new JSONP module, uh, instance, sorry, and it's gonna pass in whatever backend was passed in and whatever options was passed in. And the next property for the provider is something you haven't seen before, it's a dependencies. The depths property contains the tokens that will resolve to each of these arguments. So the first token that we want to resolve for the backend is mock backend. And the second is base request options. 
And this is why we also need to provide these two on our providers list also, because, well, if we need to inject these in, they need to be provided. Okay, so that's it. Then we've provided our JSONP module. Now, if we wanted to do this for HTTP, it's exactly the same, but we would just put HTTP here, oh, HTTP, and we're going to create a new instance of HTTP and return it, but essentially it's exactly the same. So what we've done here is when search service requests an instance of JSONP, it's going to use this special configuration. This configuration is going to return an instance of JSONP, which is using this thing called a mock backend. And that's the important thing. This mock backend is something that we can control, whereas the real backend would actually send real HTTP requests. And the next thing we want to do is because we want to have an, an instance of the mock backend to control, we need to grab an instance by resolving it through the test beds injector. So we just request an instance of backend uh, from the test bed. And we're just storing that on a variable, which I've defined above. And secondly, let's actually get an instance of the search service as well. Now again, this search service has this JSONP module injected into it. And this JSONP module has the mock backend injected into it. And just by using the mock backend instead of the real backend, we've stopped the test from triggering real HTTP requests. So now we need to configure the mock backend to return dummy test data instead. We've already got some dummy test data that I want the mock backend to return. And in order to do that, we need to grab a reference to one of the connections, one of the connections that the JSONP module is going to try to make to a server. Now we can do that because the back end has an observable called connections that we can subscribe to. So that's the first thing we want to do is backend.connections subscribe. Now for each of the, every time we make a request to some API, this connections observable is going to emit a connection. And because we're subscribing to it, we can get a reference to that connection. So let's do that. And every time we get a connection, I want to tell it to respond with a mock response. So we do connection dot mock respond new response. And I'm going to pass it some data that I want it to respond with, and it's going to respond with a body, which is essentially just the data that we want to respond with, with the fake response. Actually, let me call it fake response. So we're not using the same word for everything. Okay. So whenever the mock backend emits a connection, we're going to tell that connection to respond with this fake response. So this is regardless of which API we actually request. It doesn't matter. Any API is requested it will respond with the same response. And then we actually want to trigger the search service to send an API request. So to do that, we actually just call service search function. So if you remember, our search service has a search function. Whatever we pass to it is the search term that we want to search for, and that gets passed to the API request. Now this is an asynchronous function. So if we look at the search service, you can see it's returning a promise and also the JSONP request is itself also a promise. So there's lots of asynchronous activities here. And this is why in this test spec, we are using one of the asynchronous methods. So the one I'm using is the fake async method. You could also use just the async function with the when stable function or just the Jasmine done function. But I like to use the fake async method because I, I like to be very explicit in my code regarding what I'm waiting for. So now I can wait for all of those promises to be resolved by typing in tick. 
And then once all of that is resolved, I can be certain that the search service, the results property now contains the data that would have that is returned from our fake response. So this artist ID, artist name, track name and artwork URL. So now I can add some expectations. So the first expectations is that the results array has length of one. And then another expectation is that the first first search item, the artist name is going to be U2 to match our results here. And I can add the rest of our expectations underneath it. Like so. So now if I run this application, it passes. But more importantly, it passes without actually sending any HTTP requests to the iTunes API. All of these tests are run in isolation with fake responses being sent back and by using a mock backend. So to summarize, we can test code that makes HTTP requests by using a mock backend. And this requires that we configure our testbed so that the JSONP or HTTP services are created using the mock backend. We then grab a reference to the instance of mock backend that was injected into the JSONP or HTTP service and use it to simulate responses. And since our code and HTTP is by nature asynchronous, we use one of, one of the async testing mechanisms that we've covered in one of the previous lectures.